Guten Tag Deutsch 1. Heute beginnen wir die dritte Stufe von der achten Einheit. Es heißt Anprobieren und Kaufen. So, hier sind unsere Lernziele. Wir lernen Phrasen und Vokabelwörter für das Modegeschäft. So, das Modegeschäft ist the clothing store. So, wenn wir um, Klamotten einkaufen gehen, welche Phrasen müssen wir wissen? Okay, wir lernen auch ein paar uh, neue trennbare Verben, so several prefix verbs. Um, aussehen we've had before, but we're also going to see anprobieren und anziehen. Okay, los geht's. So zuerst beginnen wir mit einer Wiederholung, a little review from what we talked about last week. So get your vocabulary out and um, or open it in another tab. And... Um, Write about three sentences or so um, about some of the style that you see here. So, schreibt über den Stil von den Promis. Write about the style of these celebrities. So, you could write what item they're wearing and give your opinion of each. So, example, ein Beispiel. Sie trägt eine modische weiße Bluse. Sie sieht modisch aus. So she's wearing a stylish white blouse. She looks stylish. You could also use um, hot on for someone has something on, if you want to use that for what they're wearing, or seat on. Remember from last week, that's that they put on something. So you could say, sie zieht eine Bluse on. All right, so pause the slide here, pause the video, write three sentences out about these pictures, and then I'll give you a couple examples and we'll move into today's lesson. Okay, so here's an Empire Beispiele. You might say, Zoe trägt uh, hübsche Sandalen. Ich finde sie ganz schön. You could say, Olivia trägt einen schwarzen und weißen Rock. Der Rock sieht sehr schick aus. You could say, David trägt eine modische schwarze Sonnenbrille und eine dunkelgraue Mütze. Ich finde die Sonnenbrille um, modisch und die Mütze big fame or something like that. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. So, im Modegeschäft, wichtige Phrasen. So, we've learned how to describe clothing items and we learned what the clothing items are called. But now, if you were actually in a store, what phrases would you need to be able to get the information you would need? And what phrase would you have to understand from the sales clerk that they might say to you? So, zuerst sehen wir einige Verben. Manche von diesen Verben sind neu und manche sind alt. So, zuerst haben wir das Verb suchen. Suchen is to look for um, or to seek something. Um, it looks kind of like seek, if you see suchen, seek. Um, you also might think it looks a little bit like searching for. One of the key differences is this word for here that we use in English, I search for, I look for, you don't need it. Um, because if you are seeking something, you're not seeking for it, you're just seeking it. So if I were looking for um, a sweater, I could say, ich suche einen Pullover. Okay, das nächste Verb ist alt. Das hatten wir schon. Möchten, would like. Das nächste ist auch alt. Kaufen, to buy. Nehmen, bedeutet to take. Brauchen, bedeutet to need. Um, all those were old for us. But then we've got a new one. Anprobieren. Anprobieren bedeutet to try on. And we're going to see that it's a separate prefix verb. So probieren bedeutet to try. Und an is the on. So ich probiere das Kleid an. I try the dress on or something like that. Bekommen is to get or receive. We've had that before. Und kosten to cost. So most of these are old verbs. We just have a couple that are new. Suchen and anprobieren. Um, here haben wir Phrasen auf dieser Seite. Für den Verkäufer oder die Verkäuferin. Die Verkäuferin, the sales clerk. Uh, hier auf dieser Seite haben wir Phrasen für den Kunden oder die Kundin. Um, so er ist der Kunde hier und was sagt er? So beginnen wir mit dem Verkäufer oder der Verkäuferin. Sie könnten fragen, was suchen Sie? What are you looking for? What are you seeking? Okay. Was möchten Sie? What would you like? Haben Sie einen Wunsch? Do you have a wish? So Wunsch here, der Wunsch, that's a new word for us. A wish, do you have a wish? Kann ich Ihnen helfen? Now we've actually seen this one before. Remember, Ihnen is formal and it um, is another form of the word Sie. So Sie just means you in the formal. 
but Enan is to you or for you usually. So can I be helpful to you? Can I help you? Kanish Enan helfen. Was bekommen Sie? What are you getting? Möchten Sie das anprobieren? You could put anything here in this blank. Möchten Sie das Hemd anprobieren? Möchten Sie das Polo Hemd anprobieren? Welche Größe haben Sie? Okay, this one also has a new word in it. Um, Größe bedeutet size. Um, die Größe, you might see um, that it actually has another word that you know in there. You see the word gross in there. So gross can be big or tall. You add the umlaut and the e, you've got Größe, and that's the size. So you could say, ich habe Größe S, ich habe Größe M, ich habe Größe L, ich habe Größe XL, und so weiter. Okay, welche Farbe möchten Sie? So what, which color would you like? So, ich möchte das Hemd in blau oder rot. Und hier ist blank or here sind blank. So, if you've asked where something is, they might say, here ist um, diese Bluse, here sind die Jeans, something like that. Um, another thing that, just to remember, if you've asked for locations of things, they might say, um, just like we learned in previous chapters, um, die Jacken sind da hinten oder die Blusen sind dort drüben oder... Um, Die Socken sind da vorne, or something like that. So don't forget those ways that they could also tell you locations. Okay, so as the Kunde oder Kundin customer, you might say, Haben Sie? Like, do you have this? Uh, one of the common things is like, Haben Sie das in blau? Do you have this in blue? Or Haben Sie das in Größe M? Do you have this in a medium? Ich suche, so zum Beispiel, he might have come into the store saying, Ich suche ein Polo Hemd, because that's what he's looking at. Ich möchte ein Polo Hemd. Ich brauche einen neuen Rock. Ich bekomme. And you'll see these are just all these verbs we've been using. Ich suche. I'm seeking or I'm looking for. Ich möchte. I'd like. Ich brauche. I need. Ich bekomme. I'm getting. Ich nehme. I'll take. Wie viel kostet das Hemd? How much does the button down cost? So wie viel is how much. We've also used was before, and it's fine to say was kostet, like what does it cost? Now, if you had um, like shoes or something, note that you'd have to have kosten here. So like I could say, wie viel kosten die Stiefel? How much do the boots cost? Um, darf ich das Kleid anprobieren? May I try on the dress? Um, this darf ich, we've had all year long with darf ich zur Toilette gehen. May I go to the restroom? So you could also use it with may I try this on? Darf ich, whatever it is, anprobieren. You could, you could also just say that you'd like to. Ich möchte bitte die Schuhe anprobieren. I would like to try on the shoes. All right, so those are our helpful phrases, and you're actually going to be using those in your flip grid this week as well. Okay, so a verb that we all already talked about last week, but we want to expound upon it a little bit, is passen. Passen is to fit. So real quick little review. See if you can figure out what verb forms would go in these sentences. Das T-shirt... Passt gut. Okay, the airs yes form. Die Socken passen mir gut. That's our plural form. Und die Hose passt nicht. Now this one's a little funny for us as English speakers because we usually say the pants and we use a plural form with them. But remember, die Hose, the pants in German, is just singular. Um, so when we're talking about the fit, if something doesn't fit, then how do you describe that? So if someone asked, uh, let's say you were trying something on in the store and the store clerk or your friend who's shopping with you asked, like post air, post Z, post S, the gender here would just depend on what item it is, or shoes or socks or something plural, post and Z, do they fit? So does it fit? Do they fit? And you could say, um, yeah, or nine, and then give a reason why not. So again, the air Z, S depends on the gender of the item. So if I were trying on a sweater, I could say air is... Zu, and then I could describe it's to something. Or if it's just a little off in some way, es ist or er ist or sie ist ein bisschen zu something. So what could you put there? We've talked before about putting colors there, like um, es ist ein bisschen zu grün. Um, but what else could you put? Ah, and when we're talking about zu being too much something, you could also say viel zu, it's much too. So es ist ein bisschen zu or es ist viel zu. Well, one of the obvious ones that we've had before when we talked about Hara is lang und kurz. 
So if you're, um, let's say I tried on this sweater and it was just really long, I could say, um, er ist ein bisschen zu lang or viel zu lang. Let's say um, you were trying on a skirt and your mom thought, mm, I don't think that's school appropriate. They might say, um, nein, der Rock ist ein bisschen zu kurz. Sometimes you might just say it's too big, too small. Es ist zu groß, es ist zu klein. And you might ask for eine andere Größe, a different size. You could also say es ist zu weit oder es ist zu eng. Now, weit we've had before, and that can mean far, but it can also mean wide. And then eng, um, eng is tight. And another way if you want to talk about wide would be to say bright. So weit und breit. Um, bright is like kind of broad. Um, so weit und breit or eng, tight. Okay, so y'all try it out. What would you say about the items in these pictures? If there's something wrong with the item, which they all have a little something wrong with them, how would you describe why it doesn't fit? Okay, so D jeans. What could we say about D jeans? D jeans is zu lang, or D jeans is zu gross. Now notice they have ist and sind here. Um, usually um, pants in German are all gonna be treated as singular, but die jeans can also be used as plural. So you could say die jeans ist oder die jeans sind. Either one works. What about this guy? Oh, poor guy, look at these pants. So we might say die Hose ist zu kurz und ein bisschen zu weit. So too short and a little too wide maybe. Und Nummer dry here. Der Pulli oder der Pullover ist zu lang. Oder es zu gross, okay? Either way works for describing the fit. So one other little exercise we want to talk about here just has to do with grammar rather than vocabulary. We've done separable prefix verbs before, so this is just kind of a reminder for us. But when you are using a separable prefix verb, what you're going to do is you're going to take the verb part, okay, that's the part that has the verb stem and the en ending. You're going to conjugate it for whatever the subject is, and then you're going to take the prefix, and these prefixes are prepositions that have been stuck on the front of the verb. And you're going to put the prefix at the end. So say in here is to see, and aus can be out or from, um, and so aussehen, um, combined together, is to look like or appear. Um, the way we remember that is to think of it's the look that's coming out from you or the look you're putting out. It's what other people are seeing from out there. So those meanings are kind of combined to mean to look like or to appear. So how would you say this sweater looks really awesome? Der Pulli sieht echt stark aus. Okay. Anziehen, this is to put on or to wear. We had this last week. So if you wanted to say, I'm putting the skirt or my skirt on, you'd say, ich ziehe meinen Rock an. Now, if you're looking at this by itself, ziehen is to pull. So anziehen is like to pull it on. And then ausziehen, aus uh, being uh, off or from or out. Um, if you're pulling something off, you're taking it back off. So to take off clothing, you could say, Peter, Seat seine Stiefel aus. He takes the boots or his boots off. And then on probieren is to try on. This is our new one here, probieren to try, and then on is on. So that one's pretty straightforward. So if you wanted to ask, are you trying on the button down? You could say, probierst du das Hemd an? All right, so pretty straightforward how those work. So jetzt, ein bisschen Übung. Um, little practice here with us. Uh, du bist im Modegeschäft. Was probierst du an? So take a moment and actually speak out loud. Pause the video and look at the items and think what would you actually maybe try on if you were in the store and you saw these things and you had to try something on. Um, and then use a couple of these ways to say what you would try on. Okay, so let me do a couple examples. Um, if I wanted to try on the dress, I could say ich probiere das Kleid an oder ich möchte das Kleid anprobieren. And you could even use the question from earlier, darf ich das Kleid anprobieren? Here I could say ich möchte die Bluse anprobieren oder ich probiere die Bluse an. I could say ich probiere den Gürtel an oder ich möchte den Gürtel anprobieren. I could say ich probiere das Stirnband an, ich möchte das Stirnband anprobieren und so weiter. Okay. 
All right, a little bit more grammar practice here um, with stem changes. So we just practiced with al sayin because it's a separable prefix verb, but the other thing you probably noticed is it has a stem change. So this S-E-H here, ze, our stem for um, zayin, it gets an I added in the do and the ers yes forms. Now namen, because we've brought that back up, an old verb that we could use to say I'll take it. Um, this one gets a stem change also in the do and the ers yes forms, but instead of N-E-H-M, it becomes N-I-M-M, -M, so nim. So with the ish form and the other forms, you don't have to worry about changing it. You can stick with the original. But with do and airs yes, the stem change is going to show up. So let's say we've got this guy, Alex, here, and he says, also, wie, hm, ich, hm. He's wanting to ask, how do I look? So here, it's the ish form. We're not going to have to worry about the stem change, but we are going to have to separate it. So we'd say, wie sehe ich aus? So pause your video and say what you think would go in these blanks, and then I'll show you the answers. All right, here are the rest of them. Bianca could say, du siehst sehr schick aus. Der Pulli passt dir gut. And then she might ask, nimmst du ihn? So are you going to take it? Are you going to get it? And he might say, ja, er sieht wirklich stark aus und ist ziemlich preiswert. Ich glaube, ich nehme ihn. So with this, you had to kind of figure out what makes more sense in the sentence, to say it appears or it looks a certain way, or to say um, they're taking it. And then you had to conjugate your verb correctly. Okay, so here's a Wiederholung to do on your Vokabelblatt. So again, you can either have it open another tab, or you can write it in your notes, um, or if you printed it off, you can write it on there. But on the back, under the Zetze sentences, you'll have a place to do this. So let's see if you can um, actually answer these questions here. Pause your video, read over the questions, write out what you think the answers would be, and then push play, and I'll show you what the answers are. All right, here are our answers. Um, now, technically, there's a little bit of variety you could um, have in these. There's oftentimes more than one way to say something, but I tried to provide you with uh, the um, different options that we've covered today. So the Verkäufer might say to the Kunde, wie kann ich ihnen helfen? Was suchen sie heute? Was brauchen sie heute? Was möchten sie heute? Um, you could then say if you wanted a green sweater, ich brauche einen grünen Pullover, ich suche einen grünen Pullover, ich möchte einen grünen Pullover. Um, any of those verbs work. And to ask try it on, darf ich ihn anprobieren? If you're saying it here, it's the masculine um, direct object or accusative form of it. Um, oder ich möchte ihn bitte anprobieren? Um, if it doesn't fit and it's too wide, you'd have to say, der Pulli passt nicht, denn er ist zu weit. Or der Pulli passt nicht, weil er zu weit ist. Okay, remember, we have our two different forms of because here, so I gave you each option there. And if you want to take a picture and send a Snapchat to your friend saying that you look awesome in it, you can say, ich sehe in dem grünen Pulli echt stark aus. Now you could potentially switch the word order and say, ich sehe echt stark in dem grünen Pulli aus, as long as you have sehe second and aus last. Then you followed your verb rules. Okay, das ist alles für heute. So, schönen Tag noch und bis das nächste Mal. Tschüss!